Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These art lessons are taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape Henlopen School District in Delaware. I hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because, after all, the visual arts are meant to be seen. Hello Cape Artists and welcome back to the Heart of a Viking. In all of our videos this week we are traveling to Antarctica and we're learning how the scientists work and study the animals and the climate on Antarctica. Today we're focusing on the polar bears and the auroras australias, the beautiful lights that shimmer in the sky. So today we're going to be creating our own chemical reaction too to create our own painted auroras australias and we'll learn how to use simple shapes to draw our polar bears. Well, I am super excited for you to learn all about these things and create your own. So let's jump right in. Polar bears are found in the frozen wilds of the Arctic, Canada, Alaska, Greenland, Russia, and Norway. These are seriously big bears. Adult bears can weigh as much as 1,500 pounds. Their huge size and weight makes them the largest living carnivore. That means meat eaters on Earth. Polar bears are well adapted to survive in the harshest environments on our planet. As well as their thick fur, they have a thick layer of fat called blubber that insulates and protects their bodies from the frosty air and near freezing waters. Polar bears also have black skin under their glistening coat, which help them soak up the sun rays and keep warm. These magnificent mammals have an incredible sense of smell which they use to track their favorite food, which is seals. Did you know that a polar bear's fur isn't actually white? It's transparent, which means see-through, with a hollow core that reflects light. This really helps the bears blend in with their surroundings. Sadly, these incredible creatures are classified as vulnerable. That means that in nature there aren't as many as there need to be. The biggest threat to a polar bear is climate change. Rising global temperatures mean that the sea ice is melting earlier and forming later each year, leaving the polar bears less time to hunt for their food. Now, let's switch gears and learn a little bit about the auroras that are visible in the sky above Antarctica. An aurora is a light display that is found in the sky. They are usually seen at high latitudes. Auroras are produced when the Earth's magnetosphere is disturbed by the solar wind. An aurora around the North Pole is called Aurora Borealis, meaning Northern Lights. Around the South Pole, it's called the Aurora Australis, or Dawn of the South. It can be seen from long distances, stretching across the sky for hundreds of miles. Auroras can only be seen at night because their light is not as strong as the light of day, and the faint stars can even be seen through the auroras. However, they do happen during the day too. The auroras occur when the sun sends off particles into space. These particles are mainly electrons with charge and energy, which means they contribute to electricity. Earth has a protective shield of energy all around it. This is called the magnetic field and forms an elongated sphere around the Earth called the magnetosphere. The Earth's magnetic field keeps off most of the solar wind. At high latitude areas, like the polar regions, the magnetic field is vertical. It does not keep off the particles of the solar wind which can come from the magnetosphere and hit the particles of the air in the Earth's atmosphere. When they hit, the atmosphere is heated and excited, and the excess energy gets away, a phenomenon which can be seen as moving lights in the sky. An aurora can be especially bright following a solar event called a coronal mass ejection. That's when the charged particles rip through the electromagnetic field because of their power. Auroras are not only visible on Earth, but also from outer space. If you were to look from outer space, you would see a ring-shaped aurora spanning around 2,500 miles around both poles. Now, join me as we see how we can create some beautiful energy-charged auroras and polar bear pieces of art. Since our project today combines art and science, we're going to be needing a few supplies that aren't traditional art supplies. So make sure you listen to what we need first and then gather what you need before starting your project. 
All right, so the first thing we're going to be needing is a cup that has some vinegar in it. I'm actually going to be using four of these, even though I'm only showing you one here. We'll also be needing some baking soda from your kitchen again. We'll need a glue stick, a black piece of paper, several white papers. I'm going to choose three, but you could do four or five, however many you want and some food coloring, again, from the kitchen, whatever colors you have or you want to use. And then you'll need something to stir and scoop the vinegar with, so either a straw or a spoon, either one. And then you'll be needing a tray, something that has a little bit of depth to it so we can pour things into it, and some newspaper just in case things spill. First thing we're going to do is scoop some of our baking soda into our tray. So I'm just putting like a thin layer just to cover the whole bottom space. Set that aside for just a moment. Get your cups that have vinegar in them. And I only have about a tablespoon or two of vinegar in each one. And I'm going to squeeze a little drip or two of food coloring into each of the cups of vinegar. Next, I'll stir them up. Okay, set those right to your side there. Make sure you're always working on your piece of newspaper. All right, so now we're gonna switch to either the straw or the spoon, and we're going to be placing some of the vinegar onto the baking soda. You'll see that it will fizz and bubble whenever you first put the vinegar onto the baking soda. That's a really super cool, fun science experiment happening right there. Also, the colors are going to blend into each other a little bit, creating some additional colors that you don't even have. So I see some blue-green on mine, and I don't even have any blue-green. And you want to keep doing this until you can't see any more of the white baking soda. You want all the white baking soda to be very colorful. Now I'm going to take one of my pieces of white paper, place it on top, and press it all the way down into the vinegar until the whole piece of paper turns wet. Then I'm going to very gently peel it off, flip it over, and check out my awesome work. Beautiful. All right, so now I'm going to set this one aside on a different piece of paper to dry. And I'm going to do it again. That color that's on mine is already there, so I can just add a bit more color and I can actually make a second Aurora's painting. And I'm going to make one more to make three paintings, but you could keep going. As long as you have some vinegar and some baking soda on that tray, you can keep making paintings. All right, so we need this to dry before we can move on. A couple of options are, one is just let it dry. Simply let it sit on the table, walk away, go do something else, check back later, see if it's dry. Option two is you can set it out in the sun if it's a sunny day. The sun will definitely help it dry a whole lot faster. Or you can do what I do a lot, which is bring it into the bathroom, make sure you ask your grown up, and use a hair dryer on low to gently dry the water so that you can move on to the next step more quickly. All right, so now that we have our paintings and they're all dry, we're going to start by choosing the one you want to work with first. I'm going to choose that one. Put the other ones aside, and I'm going to have my black paper ready, and I'm actually gonna practice my polar bear on a scrap paper first. So I'm going to start by drawing a circle for his head and a pretty large oval for his body. Then I'll connect the neck to the body, Add his little nose and his little ear and practice making his legs. One of the important things I learned about drawing the polar bear is that his front leg comes from his neck, not from under his body, which is normally how I would draw my legs. And his back leg comes from his bottom and not from under his body either. 
and then just of course two other legs those are the legs that are on the other side and his cute little stumpy tail All right, so you might be wondering why we're going to be drawing our polar bear and the snow on a black piece of paper. Well, in art, whenever the sun is very bright behind an object, it creates a shadow on the front side of whatever objects are in that scene. Therefore, we're going to be making our polar bears in that same situation. This is called a silhouette. A silhouette is when we know what the objects are because we can tell by the shapes, but the sun is being blocked by something and it's creating a shadow on the front of that object, making it appear as if it's all black. So our polar bears and even the mound of snow that they're walking on are all going to be black in this picture. All right, so we're going to start by drawing a line across our black paper, making the mound of snow that the polar bears are walking on. Then I'll follow the same steps to draw Mr. Polar Bear, a head that's a circle, an oval for a body, connect the two with the neck. I'll add his little snout on the front, one little ear, and I'll begin to draw his four legs. Don't forget his legs are wider at the top and thinner at the ankle, just like your leg. And my favorite part, the little stumpy tail. Now I just noticed that his feet aren't touching the ground, so I'm just moving my little snow line up a little higher. And if you'd like, you can even add a second polar bear. It could be another large one, or you can do what I'm doing, and I'm drawing a baby walking along with mama across the snow. Okay, time to cut this out. So I'm going to start by cutting the snow. So I'm going to go straight across the bottom there, right across the snow, add some glue to the same side where I can see the pencils. I'll make that the back and hide those messy pencil marks. And then I'll glue that to the very bottom edge of my painting. Don't forget to flip it over and rub it on the back so that it gets nice and flat. All right, well those long ends for me, I might end up cutting those off. We'll see if they stay folded back like that. Now I'm going to cut out Mama Bear, and as I'm cutting out Mama Bear, if I accidentally cut something off like a little ear or a nose or a leg, I'm going to make sure I save that piece that fell off and just re-glue it back, back on later when I'm gluing the whole thing to my Aurora's Australis. Okay, let's move these scraps out of the way and again, I'm going to put the glue on the side where I can see the pencil lines. That way the pencil lines are hidden and it looks nice and clean. Look how nice that looks. Flip it over, rub it from the back to get it to stick. I ended up cutting that off. There we go. All right, and now Mama's walking across the snow and time to cut out Baby Bear. So in the process of cutting out Baby Bear, I was realizing that there's going to be a lot of space left over on this snow mound. I think I want a second Baby Bear. So before I glue this one down, I'm going to lay this one on my piece of black paper scraps and trace it. That way I get a second exactly the same Baby Bear. So then I'll cut that out and glue them both down, making sure I put the glue on the pencil side of the cutouts. And 
there you have it. Your finished painting with the Aurora's Australias in the background and your polar bear family walking across the Arctic snow in Antarctica. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you felt like artistic scientists as you made it. And I'll see you back here next time at the Heart of a Viking. Remember those other paintings that we made earlier in our project? Well, you'll have at least one or two left. You can use those in any way you'd like. You can fold them in half, make them into a card for somebody. You could draw on them. You could cut them into pieces, whatever you would like to do, but create something with them because they sure are beautiful. HOB artists, don't forget to hop on over to Art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio. I can't wait to see it.